Today, I'm standing in front of our Patreon board, and we're really happy to have some new names going up there. We've got four new names on three new tags. So we're really personally thankful for these names. We're thankful for all the names we've got on our Patreon board. We'll be putting them up new every month. You know, when people get to $100, these guys right here, Jonathan Cunningham, Kent and Audrey Lewis, and Oren Anderson have figured out how to get their names on the Patreon board. So, you know, we're as happy about that as they are. And uh, we're really, really thankful to have these names going up. We're thankful for all our patrons because we really couldn't do it without them. So we're personally thankful, I'm personally thankful about these new additions to our Patreon board. You know, like I say, it's a great way to support us. You know, uh, it's been a fantastic thing. It's helped us a lot to keep going. And uh, like I said, we're really thankful about it. Today, I'm going to be showing you the setup on our 23-footer. The first thing I want to say about our setup right here is, is that we've got Caleb back with us. He seems to come around whenever we try to put something new together like this, whether it's a skiff or a dory or something like that. So we get along really good. We're going to have a lot of fun working on this. Last week you saw us set a transom up there, and uh, that came out nice. We leveled it, and I want to show you the thing about this grid we've got on the floor here. We made this grid, and we center-lined it and put it down nice and neat on the floor, and we fastened it down with these cement bolts. Now, we're lucky because we also have a wooden overhead, so it's not that far away, and we can put these verticals up. The whole idea of that is to support the molds while we're building the boat. We don't want the molds moving sideways, and these aren't going to move at all. When you're bending the planking or the chines on a boat like this, it tends to want to shuffle the molds around or the stem around, and the stem's going to be another little story we're going to go into a little bit later. Now, we've got our model for the 23-footer set up here on the workbench, and I want to show you a few things about transferring the measurements from the model onto the molds and the transom and those kinds of things, because that's exactly what we did. We took the measurements from the model and we're building the boat. You know, there was no plans when I built the model. There's no plans for the boat. I didn't loft it, and there's a number of reasons why. It's only got a couple of molds in it. It's done very much like you would draw something like this on a drawing board. You'd set up a couple things to bend a batten around, then you'd draw your line, and it just happens that it would intersect the other stations, so you could get measurements for stations every two feet, every foot, like some boats are set up. You know, but this one is skiff building. This is a whole procedure that doesn't resemble the way a lot of boats are built. So we've got this model set up like this. Uh, we've done it because we floated the model first. We determined where we would like to have the water line. And uh, basically the water line is going to be parallel in the bench right now. Even though the boat is upside down, it doesn't matter. Uh, that was the easiest way for us to do it. That's the way the boat is set up in real life here, so that's what we did. And we're taking our measurements. First, we're going to take height measurements, and uh, we take it from, from here, which is six inches above the stem head. And uh, like I said, it's nice and parallel. The reason why we wanted the boat parallel to the water line on the bench here is so we can take our measurements and transfer over to here in heights. The other thing we have to do we have to get the attitude of the boat level while we're building it because one of the things we have to do is drop the frames nice and plumb down the sides. If the boat wasn't level, we wouldn't know where to put the frames. We wouldn't know to tilt them this way or that way or what to do with them. So we've leveled the boat. Until we get all the frames dropped, we couldn't change that attitude of the boat. Once the frames are put in, we could do that, but we probably won't. It's a little bit high. The, the boat itself we're working on, so we'll have to put a little tiny stage in around it when we work on it and different things like that. But let me just show you this now. The boat was drawn, or the model was, was built at three quarters of an inch to the foot. Now, I'm just going to put my glasses on here so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, there's our three quarter of an inch to the foot scale right there. So I'm going to take a height, the height measurement at the transom right here. I'm just going to adjust my dividers a little bit and transfer that to the scale rule at three quarters of an inch to the foot. Now, it is five foot three inches at the height of the transom on the very corner of the boat. Now, I'm going to move up to the next station and measure that. I believe that this one is going to be a little bit lower than the other one. Let's measure it and see. Okay, this one is going to be, same thing on the three quarter inch scale, 
This is five foot one and a half. So basically, this station is a little bit lower than the station than the transom. And then we're going to come up here and we're going to measure the other station. This is the forward station. This would be the only station I really need to build this boat uh, or even a skiff. So I'm going to take that measurement right there, transfer that to here, and we have four foot four inches. Now all of these measurements are taken with, uh, with the boat on a three-quarter inch scale jacked up like six inches. So we're going to have the boat up six inches higher than it should be just so that we can have the stem head sticking down maybe six inches. It's going to stick above the shear. So that's why we've positioned it this way. We've got the attitude of the boat this way, we, the way we want it. And uh, that's how we took the height measurements. That's how we're going to transfer them onto our stations and uh, control the height. Now we're going to show you how we take some of the measurements on the molds. This is a width measurement at the chine level right here at this particular mold right there. One of these legs would be up on top of the chine, the next leg would be kind of inside the chine, and that's pretty much the measurement right across from the outside of the chine logs. Now, we're gonna pick that one up, transfer it onto our scale rule here, and we have six feet right there. It's the same width as the transom. Now, we're gonna move forward and we're going to take another width measurement at this forward station, which is right about, well, let's say right there. So that is just about right. And that is a width measurement at the chine log as well. Let's put that one on the scale rule too. This one is four feet six inches. So we're going to record those measurements, and we're going to use those measurements to measure out the width of the molds that we're going to build. I'm also going to show you, you know, I showed you how to get the heights. Now I'm going to show you that you'll center line it. We're going to show you how to set the molds up and things like that. All right, Caleb, let's pick this one up and put it right up in position here. Right on top of those blocks. Now let me slide it over where it belongs, like so. And we're just going to clamp it right in position like this. Put the clamps inside there like that. Okay, now that's one right there. So here is our first mold set up. And I just wanted to show you that we transferred the measurements from the boat or the model onto the mold. And that mold was six feet across at the chine level. And there it is right there. It's six feet across. So the next thing we did was we took the uh, angle of the side inside the model with a little bevel set and transferred that angle right onto the end of the mold here. So that's how we got the angles right here. And uh, we've sent aligned it and done some different things to it. I cut these notches right in the corners right here to bend the chine logs right in here just for a demonstration. And uh, after I put the plank on, I'm actually going to open those notches up a little bit so that the chine will slip down in here with all of the bedding compound on it before I clamp it up against the sides. So that's what those chine, uh, those slots are for right there. And we're just going to move on to the forward mold here. We've got some blocks to set it on. And I'm uh, going to move it into position like that. And then I'm going to clamp it right on there. And we'll check it for level and those kinds of things. My clamp's a little too open here. And there you go. Clamped in position like that. And I'm also going to check that one for level too. But the first thing I wanted to show you was about the height measurements. Now, I had taken those height measurements from the model and transferred them onto this piece of 2 by 6 here. So we've hung the mold to that level. And there it is right there. 50 inches or 49 and a half and that's so close to the model that you know it, it, you, you wouldn't be able to perceive any difference so you can see the mold right here is quite a bit lower than that one when we bend the chine logs in here you're going to get an idea of the shape of this boat now these are our chine logs right here this is the lumber that you saw me go to Connecticut and purchase also the same lumber that I ripped out in my front lawn now I've run it through the planer since that time. I resawed it down to an inch and a half, and like I said, run it through the planer. Now I've cut a 10 degree bevel on the very top of the chine log. This is going to be the face of the planking right here, 
fastened right up against the chine log. And the whole idea of this bevel is so that the water will run down the chines and not get trapped because up forward, it, the flare is more than 10 degrees and back after right in here, it's uh, less than 10 degrees. So as long as I don't drop the frames right down and contact the top of the chine log, the water will run right down there and not get trapped on top of the chine log, run right off exactly the way I want it. So this is pretty exciting. It's nice to have them. Uh, they're really nice lumber, really nice. When I bought this lumber, it was 33 feet long. At this point, these two chine logs are 25 feet long, a little bit longer than I need. But uh, next thing I'm going to do is pick one of them up and show you a little demonstration. I'm going to bend it around these notches that I cut in the molds and just give you an idea of what the shape of this boat is going to be like. Now there's one of the chine logs bent into position. I'm just showing you the shape of the boat right here. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the stem up and then we're going to pick up one of the side planks and bend that around. Now the top edge of that side plank actually determines where we're going to put the chine as far as height goes like this. So that's the next thing for us to do and uh, we're just going to start right away here. Well, there's our stem up in position, and I think it looks just right, really. There's some more things to do to it, but now you can see our whole setup. We've got our transom up in position, that center mold, and the forward mold. Like I said, this is kind of like a skiff mold. This is the only one I really would have needed to build this boat, but we've got one extra one in there. I've bent the chines around and shown you the... the uh, line of travel of the chine, but one of the things I don't know exactly is where the chine is going to come into the stem. So I'm going to take a side plank and bend the side plank around and uh, we'll just see exactly where it comes to. And uh, the other thing that has to happen here is obviously this is not a rabbited stem. So the, the planks don't come up to a, a position and stop. This is going to be a beveled off stem, so it's kind of like what we've always done with hang over and cut off. The planks are going to be put onto the stem, they're going to hang out like that, and then I'll cut them off afterwards. So, you know, it's a little bit different. I was going to put the chine logs in the boat first, but I would have had to try to figure out how to keep the chine logs together and exactly what position they'd be in and how to hold them in aft and different things like that. I finally decided I would go right to exactly the same way I build a work skiff and I'm going to put the side plank on it first and then force the chines inside the side plank because the side plank actually holds it all together. It holds the stem in position, it holds the transom in position and uh, it just works out really well. It's a little tricky getting the chines inside them but it's really not that big of a deal. We'll have to open these slots up a little bit so you can slide the chines down behind the side plank and without wiping all the bedding off. So there's a few things left to do. The next thing I want to do is just pick up one side plank and just stretch it on there and show you guys what that's going to be like. All right, Caleb, just make sure we get it hanging over a little bit there, maybe six inches or so, because I just want as much as I can get here to force it in. Well, it's, it's much, much easier than even I thought it would be. It's about that much effort right there, and uh, it looks fantastic. It really does. And this stuff is not three quarters. It's 13 sixteenths of an inch thick, so, you know, it's nice and healthy. The stem's really healthy, and uh, this is the way the boat's going to look. That's the way it's done right there. Well, there is our first side plank clamped into position. Now, it's there on a temporary basis, actually, but uh, we're going to take it down and then bevel the stem off to accept the planking like so, and then uh, we'll put it back in position and bed it on. The chine logs go in after that. They just slipped up to the stern end of the stem right here and bent into position and clamped down and bedded to the side plank and the next thing after the chine logs are in would be the sole plank and going right straight across the boat from chine to chine and uh, that's an integral part of the boat because this thing is a truss is what it is it's a truss 
framed boat. So this is pretty important. And after that, once we get the sole on, we'll be connecting a keel between the stem and the transom, and then the side planking or the bottom planking goes on like Ashcroft style like this. Uh, it makes it so you wouldn't have quite so much twist in it. You've got a little bit of twist in there, but if you put it this way, you'd have a massive amount of twist. So we'll, we'll uh, cant the planking on the bottom like that, put it on in two layers, and it kind of fans out. It gets a little bit easier as you go forward here because there really is no twist. It depends on how much you fan it out and how you lay it out. So it's a little bit tricky up in this area, but uh, it's no big deal. We're really looking forward to doing it. This is one of the trick areas, like I said right here. It's taken me a lot of time to think this over and decide exactly how I wanted to do it, but uh, I think I'm on to something now.